Sharia law in Alabama, Roy Moore is your man. That's right. And it's not just Roy Moore. Roy Moore is just a symptom of what's wrong with so much of our political leadership. Amen. Our political leadership in Alabama put him back in the court after he had been justly removed because of his contempt. I blame the political leadership of Alabama, and they're all culpable. They're all equally culpable with Roy Moore. Yes, make it plain. And the cure for that is reform. This state needs a new constitution. Amen. This state needs a new constitution, and it needs to remove... Now I'm going to... Sorry. It needs to remove Roy Moore. And it needs to remove straight ticket voting. Because if it wasn't for the leadership in this state and straight ticket voting, Roy Moore would be gone. The cure is to get out and vote. Yes. Every one of us needs to vote. I want to see I want to see a voter turnout above 50% in the next election. That's what we get. That means 25% of the people in this state, a clear minority, control the government. Yes. It's, a, it's a minority. And there is a majority represented here. They don't understand that, but it is a human majority. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And Chuck is right. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one further action that you can take today. If you don't feel like taking the time to fill out the long, drawn-out judicial complaint forms that we have available for you over on the table that are ready to be notarized by a free notary, you can do one other thing. It is just as simple as participating in the American governmental system. You can vote! You can vote for someone besides Roy Moore. You can yes. vote for a better Alabama, and you can vote for a better America. Amen. At this time, speaking of a woman who's been working for a better America for quite so many years, I've had the privilege of working with her down at an event in Indotha this last year. She is an amazing speaker. I cannot wait right here and right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage activist and international peace walker representing the Human Rights Campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Audra Scott Williams. You know, I think we all need to just kind of look around. Uh, whenever I talk, I say it's really important for us to know who we're standing with and who is not here because we carry both of those on our shoulders. I work for, uh, actually I'm a global trustee for an organization called the United Religions Initiative, among other things. And in, with the United Religions, uh, Religions Initiative, we work to end religiously motivated violence. And what we see right here is religiously motivated violence yes, against people who are same gender loving, against people who have to go through what Paul did because of statutes that really are irrelevant to the soul of a man, the soul of a woman, the soul of a child. I saw a sign earlier uh, with Audrey Lord on it. I don't know if she's still here. And it made me remember a quote by Audrey Lord, and it is that it is not our differences that divide us, it is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. You know, we talk about God in so many different ways. You know, I'm, I'm, I walk, walk a Christian path, I walk an indigenous path, I do a lot of globalization, global work for indigenous rights as well, many, many different fronts. And what I see for all of us is that if we can't accept the differences and we see those differences as what divides us and keeps us separate, we cannot have liberty for anybody. None of us are free until all of us are free. Amen. And so standing here today, 
I lift up the beauty and grace of who we are as LGBT people all over this country and all over the world. Karen and I as a couple, we've been walking together for freedoms for people for all kinds of issues. We've walked around the world, three and a half years it took us. We went in countries where we could have been killed because we were a same gender loving couple. And the women would take us aside and say, here your sisters. And we didn't get it at first. And then they'd say again, no, if anyone asks you, you're sisters. And it took a long time to understand what the sisterhood was saying to us, and that was that we see you, we understand you, we love you, and we want to protect you. And so we must stand together in all the many ways that it takes for us to uphold and uplift our human family. As same gender loving people, I remember in Africa where one of the tribes said that we were the uh, twin spirits and we were actually the keepers of the sacred messages because we could see everything from both sides. Now how about that? What a gift that brings to decision making about our humanity. And so today I stand, I stand for who we are and loving people that are a gift. It is our diversity that makes us special. It is human diversity that makes us that beautiful garden that has all the colors of the rainbow, that has all the textures, that looks so many different ways depending on how the sun shines. That's the gift of who we are as a human family. And so when Roy Moore says whatever he wants to say, you know, I think what we hold inside of us is so much stronger and so much bigger that it's just an irritation. And we're going to see that what we hold is going to just have that irritation go away. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. As I said, I've walked around the world. I understand what it means to put your feet to any cause. And that's what we're doing here, putting our foot to the cause. And I won't Exactly. I won't explain what I really mean by that. But putting our foot to the cause means that we're standing up for our rights as human beings to say no more taking away of the freedoms that we've worked so hard to achieve. As an LGBT community, we stand on solid ground, understanding that the faith and wisdom of the Creator that made us exactly who we are is much bigger than anybody's interpretation coming from any, any faith-based tradition yes. and we stand in that knowing that the God we serve serves us and lifts us up and we will see Roy Moore gone. I believe that firmly. Yeah. And so again, I just say as I look around, I'm very proud to be here with you. My heart is open and it brings us all in as I'm sure you do. I'll be your standing stone and I'll stand by you because I know you've got my back and we're gonna see Alabama change. Yes. We are, yes, it's we inevitable. Are. Alabama's awakening and we are part of that. You know, as a child, I remember in the civil rights movement and, and much of the activity and planning in our community took place in my backyard. I was a little girl running around. I didn't understand it, but I knew that change was coming. You know, and so I'm standing here on this precipice right now and I'm saying, I feel it, change is coming, it's already happened. Yes. And so I'm standing for that because that's the source of my power. That's the source of our power to see Alabama come all the way through. Our rights are preserved and stand on solid ground. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Audra. Um, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to pause real quick. We've got a lot of media people here who took their time out today to come and be a part of history here in Alabama one more time. I'd like to give a shout out to all the local media that have come out here. Y'all give them a round of applause. You know, and I drove today from Dothan, Alabama. I didn't think anybody else was going to be here, but one of the reasons I'm shouting out to the media right now is I'd like to thank this man right here. Y'all give a shout out to Ken Curtis, who drove two hours from Dothan, Alabama, to stand here today and watch and be witness. This is what we need, ladies and gentlemen. We need to interact with each other. We need to come out of our clubs 
act clean, classy, and dignified, and be decent people that we can respect inside of our own community and outside of our own community. Manners matter, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get an amen? Amen! I don't know about y'all, but my mama taught me that when you show respect for someone else, you show respect for yourself. Yeah. I'm sorry, Roy Moore doesn't respect himself. Yeah, me too. But right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and keep our speaker list going and rolling as we welcome to the stage the founder and executive director of Free to Be Anti-Violence Organization, Mr. James Robinson. Give it up! Thank you. I am proud and honored to be here as a native homosexual of Alabama. And I am privileged to live in a nation where we can gather and freely and safely talk about our values. I am tired of hearing people in this building and this building up the street represent my Alabama values because they do not. I'm about as Alabama as Alabama can be, and my values are values of love and compassion. Yes. This morning, a group of us left Alabama's Free to Be LGBTQ Resource Center in Huntsville in what we call the Free to Be Express. So let me give a shout out to our people from Huntsville and everybody else here from North Alabama. We then stopped in Birmingham at our Free to Be office in Birmingham and picked up our intern from Tuscaloosa. And we had our rainbow flags flying on our Free to Be Express all the way down representing from Huntsville. And it was a great morning. Uh, last, the, the other day, we were on the streets in downtown Huntsville protesting. We were in our office and we got notification after Roy Moore spewed his latest bit of nonsense that a couple at the Madison County Courthouse had been denied a marriage license. I am proud to say that in about 30 minutes, we had a group of people down there representing equality and social justice. We did not want to do that because Judge Tommy Ragland's office had been one of the probate judges' office in Alabama that led the way back on February 9, 2015 on a truly historic day. But one couple was denied, and so we hit the streets. And we have to keep doing that. We have to stand up for everyone's rights, whether they are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, agender, pansexual, polyamorous, and even heterosexual. We have to stand up for everyone when our rights are violated. I am so proud that my life has changed, and I, now I am a public homosexual figure who has the privilege of working full-time for you every day of my life and I could not be more honored. We work to end violence while advocating for the human and civil rights of sexual and gender minorities and we work every day to build a compassionate and inclusive society where everyone is free to express themselves, everyone is free to love, and I now have the vision of being married myself someday to a man that I love, and I could not be happier, and I could not be prouder to be here, and thank you, and let's get Roy Moore out of this public office and any other public office that he may any day hope to hold. Our next speaker's name is Brett Jones. He is an author and he was a Navy SEAL. He's a veteran. Please give him a round of applause. First, I would like to uh, thank everyone involved in getting me here today. I really appreciate that. So, as I recall, it was a relatively peaceful Iraqi night until we heard a radio call from our brothers who were getting lit the hell up on route Irish. Hearing the urgency in their voices, we quickly put on our gear, grabbed our weapons, and ran towards our armored vehicles, which were about 300 yards away. Just as we ran outside, mortars and rockets started raining in with ear-splitting explosions, followed by the cracking sounds of bullets flying just over our heads and all around us. That base was under attack. 
As we started running through the hail of the tracer illuminated gunfire, we found cover behind a brick wall just 50 yards away from those vehicles. The machine gun fire was constant and heavy, and those 50 yards might as well have been 100 miles away. I was scared. In that moment of safety, behind that perfectly placed wall, I believe God came to me. And he gave me a feeling of peace, followed by an extreme sense of urgency, almost as if to say, go, go, Brett, go now. Somehow we made it to those vehicles and did the work that we were trained to do, and not one American was killed there that night. My 14-year-old son and I did some math the other day. Because when it comes to math, it turns out I need all the help that I can get. <laughs> In the last 22 years of serving my country, more than half of that time has been spent overseas, and the majority of that time has been spent in some of the most corrupt, violent, and dangerous places that this planet has to offer. Places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo, and Pakistan, just to name a few. Places where little girls are shot or executed for going to school. Places where women have acid thrown in their faces for leaving abusive husbands. Places where homosexuals are thrown from rooftops. Places where religious doctrine dictates the law. Please understand, and God knows how important this is to me, our spiritual and personal beliefs are incredibly sacred. I mean, it's freedom. It's what my brothers and our forefathers fought and died for. But one man's personal beliefs has no place manipulating or confusing the laws of an entire state, especially here in the great state of Alabama. The love. The love that I have for my family is the most powerful truth that I have ever known. And as I stand here and I look out over this gathering, I see mothers and fathers, wives and husbands, boyfriends and girlfriends, and individuals with desires and dreams that should never be obstructed because of who they are as human beings. The Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court is a steward. They serve all people as an administrative head of the state's judicial system. It is not, it is not a place for political, to grandstand for political gain. It is not a place for bigotry, biasness, or prejudices, and it is certainly not a place to repeatedly shame and humiliate and embarrass the hardworking people of Alabama on a national level. I don't know about you, but I'm angry, and righteously so. Since the Civil War, Alabama has suffered and went to great lengths to move beyond an archaic stereotype. All right. And I'll be damned if I'm going to stand idly by and watch as one man tries to throw us back into an era that we have long since put behind us. Amen. I'm with you. In closing, I would like to be as clear as I possibly can. There is no place for Roy Moore in any secular office. There is no place for Roy Moore in any state government office. All right. All right. Alabama, as our motto declares, we dare defend our rights, even if it must be against one of our own. Thank you and God bless the great state of Alabama. I just want to remind everybody that's here, and especially the man that's sitting up in the top of this building, I want y'all to give one more cheer for Roy Moore, because while he would like to remind his judges of his, their ministerial duties, I would like to remind Judge Moore of his ministerial duties one more time. So if you would, please repeat after me. Sinners hate, God does not. 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 Yes. 
Our next speaker is an activist, an international peace walker, and has represented the Human Rights Campaign. Her name is Karen Hunter Watson. It's a privilege to be here with all of you, with all of us here together standing for what we know is right. I had the privilege of marrying the first same-sex couple here in the state of Alabama, and it was such an honor for me as a same loving gender person with my partner, Audrey Scott Williams, we have been traveling around the world for peace since the year 2000. We have been standing for what's right for all people. And all people is all of us. That's right. For we are all made in the direct image of a creator that loves us. And love is the key word here today. When you love, you can't hate. When you love, you have the right to be able to marry whom you want, to be with whom you want, and love whom you want. That's what it's all about. And that's what we're here today to say, this is our privilege. It has been given to us first by God. And I say that because I know God loves me. Yes. I know God loves me just the way I am. Yes. I know she is always here with me. Yeah. doing all of those things that are through me as I come forward and say I am the face of the divine supreme being that is here in this earth right here right now standing for what I know is right yeah. and that's what's right love is the answer love is the answer not hate and I stand here for love for peace this is what we walked for when we were in uh, not here in the United States and our president became the president, President Obama. It was such an honor for me to be able to have seen that happen. It was an honor for me to see that we as LBGTQ people have the right to marry whom we want. And no one, no mortal person has the right to say anything other than that. Nobody has that right. Because God has said, Jesus himself said, the greatest commandment of all is love. That takes over everything else. And that's what I stand on. That's what we have to stand on. We can do this and we can do this. We can do it together. For together we do stand, but divided we fall. So I'm grateful to be a part of this great group of people, my brothers and sisters, because you're all a part of me, for I'm a part one with you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here and say, no more, no more, no more. No more. No more. That's what we have to say. Because God has said, I love you just the way you are. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce a woman who is not only our speaker, she was one of our organizers. She has been an amazing ball of energy while we were pulling this thing together. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please welcome to the stage founder and president of the Montgomery Humanists, the lovely and beautiful Miss Zandy Anderson. I can say that hasn't already been said. There are only so many ways to um, to explain why this order is so wrong and why Roy Moore needs to go. But um, for those of you way back there who might be on the wrong side of this issue, um, I'd like to read for you a portion of our Bill of Rights. The First Amendment Maybe you only read part of it. Um, <laughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. See, you only read that prohibiting thing. It's about all of it. You cannot make a law respecting the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Yeah. And there's more or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right of the people to peacefully assemble, yeah. Yeah. and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Yeah. 
I've got a grievance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We all do. So here's the mission statement, though, from uh, the Foundation for Moral Laws website. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Oh, yes. Um, Foundation for Moral Law. They like to use the hashtag FML. I'm not sure they know what that means. <laughs> the Foundation for Moral Law exists to restore the knowledge of God in law and government and to acknowledge and defend the truth that man is endowed with rights, not by fellow man, but by God. Now that first part has me a little confused. Roy Moore founded this organization called the Foundation for Moral Law. This is a 501c3 tax-exempt organization. They're a nonprofit, and their sole mission is literally to violate the Constitution yes. and our yes. rights. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> not moral or law. No. So Roy Moore founded this nonprofit, and he served as president for a number of years. Um, but on their website, it says something about his ethics, and that when he took office, he stepped aside because he's so ethical that he had a conflict yeah. with serving both. And I would argue that he is still serving both organizations. Um, his wife now runs the organization, and she spoke at a rally last year where she was arguing against allowing all of us the right to marry, and she said something about judicial ethics, that her husband has judicial ethics, and that's why he wasn't at the rally. Um, I think ethics might mean something different to them. Yes. And so I was asked by the media what I want one more to do. Aside from resigning, I think maybe if he could read the Constitution and pick up a dictionary. Yeah. yeah. Um, has anyone been to our Facebook event page today? <laughs> We've had some trolls. Yes. I saw that. One of the words that I saw used over and over again was the word persecution. <laughs> Does that mean something different yes. than what it says in the dictionary? Because. I fail to realize how someone else gaining rights that you've always had is some kind of persecution of you. Um, I am a humanist. I am a secular individual. I represent Montgomery Humanists, um, and we're an educational nonprofit. Um, the other point that I'd like to make for Roy Moore, not for you all, you all already know this, is that the Supreme Court of the United States granted the right to marry to all Americans. And um, you all know that the Confederacy lost, right? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I know that the flag just came down last year, but we are still part of America. And as Americans, we have those rights that are granted to us by the federal court systems. Yes. Um, the First Amendment, again, separation of church and state. As I said, it protects your right to worship, your right to acknowledge God, your right to believe in whatever you want to believe. But you don't have the right to force those beliefs on others. That's right. And that's the other part of the First Amendment. If we allow Roy Moore to force his personal beliefs on us, um, we're going to have to allow anyone to put their personal beliefs into law, and that can't happen. Yes, thank you. Let me give you an example. I'm a pescatarian. Does anyone know what that is? Yes. A vegetarian who eats fish? Um, that's my personal belief. I don't believe in eating meat. But if I was in office and I made a law or put out an order that cheeseburgers are illegal, you all would know that was wrong, right? And I think even even Roy Moore would know that is wrong. I, I hope. Um, I'm also a veteran. And I fought to defend this nation. I fought to defend the rights of all Americans. Even those who live in Alabama. <laughs> and I would like to think that when a right is granted after years and years and years of struggle, 
two individuals who should have had it to begin with. All right. Yes. That we're allowed to still exercise that right even in Alabama. Yes. yes. I want to see Alabama move Especially forward with the rest of the nation. Yes. And I refuse to let Roy Moore hold us back. Yes. He doesn't speak for me. He doesn't speak for all of you. He thinks he speaks for the state of Alabama. So my call to action for all of you is to vote him out. Vote all of them out. I think, I believe, that the majority of us want marriage equality in Alabama. Yes. Yes. But the majority of voters are keeping people like Roy Moore in office. And so that's what we need to do. We need to move forward. We need to vote better. Everybody register to vote and go and make those smart decisions and get these people out of office. Thank you. Thank you. That was Zandy Anderson. She's amazing and she's also my wife. But more than that, she is an activist who's been fighting for equality for a very long time. And uh, I think we should all thank her very much. And also, she, she helped put this together. So a round of applause for Zandy. Come on. Just a couple of reminders. The, uh, the judicial complaint forms are available. So if anybody would like to make a, uh, an official judicial complaint, please meet us over there at the, uh, at the humanist table is where they're congregating. And again, our, uh, we will be having a wedding this afternoon. The couple's running a little bit late, as happens. Uh, so that's going to kick off at about 2.30. If anybody else was thinking about getting married today, you're welcome to come and uh, have a chat to us over that way as well. And uh, we look forward to meeting you. Before we move on to our final speaker, I just have a, uh, a small poem that I wrote. Thank you.